All right, so they just announced Guild Wars 2's next expansion that's coming out in August. It looks like August 22nd at a uh, rounded price of about $25. Uh, that's US. Here's the live expansion trailer that was just released, just announced. Let's go ahead and take a look and, and see what there is to see. All right, looks like we got some void energy type stuff going on here. Definitely void. Ooh. That tower's always been in the distance, but you've never been able to get there. Whoa. Okay. All right. All right. You got my attention. All right. Guild Wars 2. Secrets of the Obscure. And definitely some type of void baddie. All right, look, we got the price for $25, deluxe version, 50, and uh, what's the high end is 75. Uh, you pre-purchase, you get a muckluck hat. I mean, <laughs> so, so, all right, so we got a whole bunch of news. We're doing this live. There's not gonna be a lot of fancy edits. We gotta talk about all the big changes coming to Guild Wars 2, and there are a lot of them. All right, so here's what we got thus far. So first, it looks like they're gonna be switching up combat in Guild Wars 2 for the Secrets of the Obscure, which is the new expansion. Back in their original update for the combat philosophy, they were looking to add new ways, and this is all they hinted at, is that new ways that they can actually implement new gameplay, new weapon, diversity we'll say amongst the professions and this and i think to a lot of people's speculation they got it right here we go this is all the cool stuff so as a lot of people speculated that they were going to be able to have the expansion we'll say weapons the elite specialization weapons being offered across the board to all elite specialization so in this example they bring up a hammer wielding hollow smith or a uh, firebrand that uses a longbow i mean the elite specs are now going to be able to have their weapons used across the board. As a core elementalist, you can use the hammer. Yes. <laughs> now think about that. That's going to be so cool. Now look at this. Look. So like the guardian, and this is on day one. This is what they're saying is at launch. Day one, you'll be able to have a guardian who can use a max, uh, an axe main hand, a sword off hand, and a longbow, regardless of the core profession. Like, that's so cool. That is so, so cool. Uh, dagger, main hand, offhand, pistol. I mean, and then let's get to my elementalist. Look at this. Look, sword, elementalist, core, war horn, offhand, and hammer is now open across the board on day one. That means that you'll be able to use all of the weapons across the board. So if you have that really nice hammer that you've been using for your catalyst, but you haven't touched weaver, now you're going to have a hammer wielding weaver. <laughs> this is going to be, this is, this is insane. Uh, this is so exciting. And they even highlighted here because uh, in that example where I brought up like the catalyst hammer, this is a big change. So what's going to happen? Because if you have the catalyst hammer, but you are a weaver, do you have like some type of dual attack? And yes, they're offering up these different changes, these different skills across the board. Now, if you look like they bring up the idea of a Berserker's Primal Burst ability, but using a dagger from the Spellbreaker, or perhaps an Untamed's Unleashed Ambush utilizing a staff. I mean, this is <laughs> this is going to make combat and this is going to flip everything on its head immediately once this comes out. There is it is going to be pandemonium. Crazy, crazy stuff, guys. Uh, and, and really, I think it does emphasize what they're after is just to have that freedom for the, the character, freedom for the player. You're able to play the way that you want to play, which is fantastic. And it looks like this weekend you'll be able to try out the, uh, the different weapon combinations and the elite specializations during a beta weekend uh, coming up this week. Nice. Nice. Guys, I don't think you understand. This is going to change combat forever in Guild Wars 2. This is so damn cool. Oh, man. All right, and this this is even bigger because one of the big things that a lot of players uh, uh, kind of bounce back and forth uh, between their balance and what they're focusing on and all that is going to be, of course, their rune choices as far as gear. Like, what am I going to slot my gear with? This is the big point right here is that they are removing the extra effect. I'll use, for example, like the rune of Balthazar, which increases fire uh, or, or uh, burning condition damage, things along that lines. 
and the last tier was it, it increases max health and more burning. Well, they're removing that sixth tier. So each one of the runes is still going to do its stat things normally, but they've removed that sixth tier bonus effect. Now they are putting into relics. And these relics essentially are going to be an additional way that you can customize the way that you play the game. So you can essentially have that sixth spot bonus effect as far as your rune. That's going to be the new relic part of your build. What relic are you choosing? Which gives you these additional effects. So this also means like if in PvP, if you're running Rune of the Lynx, which increases movement speed by 25%, that would be your relic choice. You would still get all the passive benefits, but it's essentially a different way to mix and match what you want. So you can really get the really good relic choices or the, the tier six rune choices, but also match it up with uh, the good stats that you want. So if you're running like a, we'll say a burning build or something like that, or a heavy condition build, maybe you don't have to use Rune of Nightmare all the damn time now. You guys don't understand how cool this is. This is really, really going to shake up this damn game. Woo! And it does look like here, actually, that you'll be able to uh, uh, get these uh, relics through crafting, instance content, reward tracks. So you can earn these in a bunch of different ways. So this is going to be something else that you have to uh, work on and unlock. I'm okay with that, actually, because that ends up saving me some gold. I'm looking at you, Rune of Perplexity for the Mesmer. But the idea of this is, is that now this is something new that you can earn and work on and get something really, really cool. And it looks like they're going to be giving a, a Relic Selection Box at launch for those who purchase the expansion. Woo! Ah! And this is probably the biggest news right here is they're looking to expand weapon proficiency across the board. Kind of going back to the for, uh, back and forth on the idea of like weapon masters, abilities and skills that are tied to weapons. Let's open it up to other classes. So for example, to round out our combat system, uh, we're granting each profession proficiency with an additional weapon. And that's that means that the core profession will have a new weapon. And it's like, <laughs> this is going to make combat the craziest thing in guild wars 2 it is it's going to be all over the place uh now it does say that it's going to be um uh, the second major release shortly thereafter um and they're looking to have um uh, these out as major quarterly releases uh but um you'll be able to test out this within the beta but look at this look guardian guardian gets a pistol main hand and alt hand <laughs> it's my super soaker idea came true Revenant gets a scepter main hand. Eh, I'm not too too happy about that one. Warrior with a staff. Uh, I'm okay with. Engineer short bow is is that that just makes my life like that because I know that it's going to have like explosive arrows or something like that. You know that it's going to have those. Uh, what's it? Uh, Ranger gets uh, mace main hand offhand. Okay, I can kind of see that they're going along with the untamed idea. That that does make sense. Mesmer gets a freaking rifle. <laughs> now you have illusionary. You have an illusionary sniper coming to the game. An illusionary sniper. What the hell? My elementalist is getting a pistol main hand. <laughs> Guys, this is going to be so damn cool. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, and the Necromancer is getting a sword, main hand, offhand. All right, guys. I don't know about y'all, but I'm riding the hype train. I'm on the copium. I'm doing this. I'm so excited. This is going to be so cool. So looking at some of the other additions, what they're talking about, extending the story and what they want to do with the game. So what you see right here, um, what they're just talking about the studio updates, what they've been hinting at. So it basically seems like while we were dealing with End of Dragons and the uh, Giala Delve and going through there, it seems that we've uh, uh, stirred up some trouble across Tyria. A uh, new force rise, uh, rises to threaten Tyria. Um, so it, apparently it's, um, more, it seems like it's going to be more related to the void, which is, which is pretty cool. I think that's a fun way to go because then it's like almost like an existential horror, um, uh, uh, or cosmic horror almost in that sense. That's pretty cool. And then this line that's right here. Now that the cycle is over, Tyria is blood in the water. The mists are watching. So we have two new explorable zones, uh, the wizard's tow uh, tower outpost floating above the Tyrian coast. Um, these will be related, uh, released at launch or available at launch. 
um, every few months uh, uh, that follow every few months, a third explorable zone will open in conjunction with the ongoing story that plays out. So very similar to how they do with like Living World, where there's like a new map, new zone, tons of new currencies and things like that. Here's something really, really cool. Um, so for those who have been following me on my journey, I went through the Skyscale acquisition. This is something that a lot of players have asked. The Skyscale used to take quite a bit. Now it's a little bit easier with the return to achievements, but they are now adding a new acquisition method. Regardless if you own Path of Fire or completed the original Skyscale collection, um, Secrets of the Obscure will give you a more streamlined collection to unlock your scale, uh, your sky scale. So you'll be able to, if you purchase the Secrets of the Obscure, there will be a way that you can earn the sky scale quickly or, or faster, we'll say, just through this expansion. You don't have to own Path of Fire for this. And then once you complete the uh, the sky, uh, unlock the sky scale and Secrets of the Obscure, you'll get access to uh, a new sky scale skin collection, which you will be able to get this, what, what it looks like. That's that's pretty awesome. That is pretty cool. <laughs> um, and it looks like they're going to update some of the masteries uh, for Sky Scale, um, which is which is pretty cool. So air rescue they had the flame attack uh, wall launch. Yes, um, can use updrafts. That's pretty cool. That's new uh, combat launch uh, to mount your Sky Scale in combat. Woo! Woo that, uh, I think this might mean more so like. You, you'll be in combat and then you can mount up and then fly away is the idea. I don't think that's necessarily like you can use your sky scale for like aerial strife attacks. That'd be cool though. Um, sky scales can use, uh, uh, what's it, ley lines um, and then updrafts uh, regenerate the sky scales flying meter. Okay, that's an interesting way to bring back uh, Heart of Thorns, uh, uh, we'll say gliding. That's pretty cool. Looks like we are getting some more mastery lines that will be tied to the expansion, which is something that we always expect. Uh, the Heart of the Obscure and the Astral Ward Masteries will you do in hunting down and closing the rifts across Tyria, throughout Tyria. Uh, together, these two lines will allow you to explore the world more freely, take on greater threats, and earn richer rewards, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. And then, of course, this is uh, highlighting some of the changes that they had for the fractals, the strike missions, and what they're what they're basically focusing their content on. So um, that that does make sense. And it looks like they're going to um, bring uh, two new strike missions and a fractal of the mist, um, each with an accompanying challenge mode, which is awesome. Both strike missions uh, will be available uh, August twenty second. The challenge modes will come out in sub uh, subsequent releases. Um, and then, of course, uh, Silent Surf um, is the new fractal that's about right now if you own End of Dragons. That just came out. I also just made a guide on that, so pay attention to that. All right, so here's another part of what's going to be coming with this new expansion and a part of the expansion details, and that is the Wizard's Vault. So one of the things that Guild Wars 2 has been really opting in, really focusing on as far as new player experience and just making it as flexible for the game as possible the, one of the big things that they've been talking about is being able to earn gear and, and account-wide things from any type of play. And, and I know uh, quite a few comments that I've seen where players have been like, well, I hate that I have to go to the gift and get a gift of battle by doing player versus player. I hate player versus player. Or vice versa. It's like, I really don't want to do all these open world story stuff. I just want to play PvP. Now they're looking to have a mix of that capability of earning from a variety of ways built in into this wizard's fault and essentially what it is is you'll have new weekly and daily objectives that you have to do and you'll earn a new currency i know everyone hates a new currency but you'll earn astral acclaim and this means that you'll be able to purchase new weapons new armor types and things along that sort as well as getting a number of really cool like legendary crafting starter kits that's pretty cool you got gold mystic coins and stuff like that uh, uh, and that's what's really, really cool is because usually like the mystic coins and, and obviously gold, <laughs> um, those are things that players really, that, uh, people are always looking to find ways to get more. So this is a new way to get more on top of your daily achievers. What it seems like is that this vault will open up and be able to use, uh, for this couple of weeks uh, or for these weeks, for these days but then it will rotate. There will be new items every quarter. So four times a year, there will be a new set of things that you can purchase within that vault using your astral acclaim. However, you won't necessarily miss out. So like 
if you don't start the game for a month after or a month after the most recent change, you can still go and purchase what was last quarter's uh, uh, currency or whatever they're trying to sell. You'll be able to purchase that. It'll just be in a different section of the vault really emphasizing that this is this is a casual game you can play as much or as little as you want take the time that you need and not really mess out on much so this is this is really cool i like this this is probably the biggest thing that i love arena net for actually doing and saying because this is fantastic our goal is for wizard vault rewards are meant to be attainable through regular normal play there are no paid upgrades or progression skips and the legacy section exists to make time <laughs> take the time uh, uh time pressure off and allow players to catch up after they have taken a break or if they take a break this is the core of what makes guild wars 2 great is that it is a casual game Play as you want to play. I can't stress to you enough how cool this is. So this is going to be another way where you can put in some time and effort and get some really good long-standing rewards. Fantastic. And then, of course, it does look like they're going to be adding some new armor. It looks like we have the Astral War uh, Ward armor as well as the Rift Hunter's armor. I'm not quite sure which one these are. This just says Legendary Armor. So this, this might be uh, something different, but it's... Uh, and a third set will be uh, after release. And a th there's a new set called the Legendary Obsidian Armor. This, uh, <laughs> this will be the first set that doesn't require heavy investment into raids or competitive experiences. Instead, the various crafting components come from open world gameplay in the, the Secrets of the Obscura. This means for those who just want to go out and do what they need to, just in open world and stuff, play the expansion and you'll be able to earn that. You'll earn the materials leading up to it. Now I'm going to bet that the same with all other legendary armors that it's going to require a lot of materials and it will take some time. But this is another way lowering that barrier to getting legendary gear just by doing what you're already doing. This is, this is awesome, guys. Now, it does appear like this legendary armor isn't going to be uh, uh, available right at release, but you'll be able to gather the, start gathering the materials uh, come August 22nd when the game actually, the expansion releases. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so your time isn't necessarily like wasted. Uh, it, they said it comes in the second major update following the expansion law. So, uh, probably early 2024, I would say, um, projected timeline. I might be wrong on that, but, um, you'll be, uh, uh you'll be able to start training your astral ward masteries to unlock crafting recipes. All right. So you're going to be able to put the time forth and effort forth to get this up and out. That's awesome. If you pre-purchase the expansion, you'll also get a weapon box choice that gets you started on the Eagle Eye weapon set. Uh, one of three upgradable two-tier weapon sets coming in, uh, Secrets of the Obscure. On top of that, we've got new unique weapon skins, all that stuff. We, there's, there's just a lot of really cool stuff coming with this expansion. Are you telling me that this is... All the people who are like, oh, so they're just repurposing Living World Seasons. I want to see Living World Seasons do what this expansion is is looking to do. Like, I want to see it. <laughs> so without a doubt, this is probably one of the biggest news drops of the year, which is the Secrets of the Obscure and all the other features that go along with this, uh, this awesome game. Um, so yeah, absolutely. If you guys are watching and you're a new player and you're, you want to get started before this expansion comes out, then I want you to go ahead and click this video here, which is going to cover everything you need to know as a beginner new player. Stay caffeinated, folks. Exciting times.